Aldersgate United Methodist Church uh, Zoom Facebook Live worship service for July 19, 2020. We're so glad you're here. We're so glad you're in a good place and God has blessed us to be alive and to see yet another beautiful day. In spite of what last night was, the aches and pains are the concerns and worries, we are alive and breathing and so that means we're still in God's hand and God's care. I'd like to bid welcome once again to all of you uh, who's out there uh, in internet land. May God bless you and forever smile upon you. I want to begin with a couple of announcements as we prepare to go into our worship service on today. We have a couple of meetings lined up for this week. Uh, the Methodist Women, uh, which is on Monday. Uh, we have a trustee meeting that's been called and it will be Tuesday uh, at 6.30. Uh, and we also have a lay leadership meeting which will be Thursday. Emails either have gone out or will come out as a friendly reminder for these meetings. Uh, and we ask that you prepare for them as we prepare to conduct the business of the church. Uh, we're still uh, in the midst of a letter writing campaign. Uh, we invite you to write a letter on Aldersgate behalf uh, on uh, stating our opposition uh, with the liquor store as well as the transitional housing. And we wanna thank you from the bottom of our hearts for participating within that. Also, uh, um, uh, we once again wish happy birthday as well as happy anniversary to everyone who uh, is celebrating a birthday uh, anniversary for the month of July. It's a very warm month, it's an exciting month, uh, and we thank you for your contributions uh, to this world and this life as we knew it. Today, we're going to talk about living among the weeds. Have you ever asked yourself the question, why is there so much toll or pain or why do others uh, who are not uh, involved in the means of grace as you are, why are they being blessed? And, and, and Lord, just why do I have to spend so much energy engaged in individuals who don't either see it my way or who are not ad adhering to the gospel? What do you have to say about that? And so today, we want to invite you to have a discussion with us about living among the weeds. Would you bow with me as we invite the Holy Spirit into this place as we offer our praise and sacrifices to God? Heavenly Father, thank you once again for allowing us to be here in this place, in our homes, in this space, in our life. Father, we first begin by asking you to forgive us from all of our sin. Father, the sin that we know we are committing, as well as the sin we have no knowledge or not sure of, but we do understand sin is anything that separate us from your love. And so we ask that you forgive us. And Father, after you've forgiven us, we ask that you give us the boldness to be released from that guilt of that sin that we committed, that we're able to live a life and approach the throne of grace boldly, seeking and asking for what it is that you promised us, life, and that we have it more abundantly. Father, we move now to uh, asking your spirit to enter our homes, our hearts, and bind us together 
bind us together. Although we're in different multiple locations, we represent one race, the human race. We represent one people, your children. Allow your Holy Spirit to be with us. And Father, allow it to minister to us during this hour that you give us whatever it is we need in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Let us all say amen. Amen. <clears throat> I will call to worship this morning. It will be on your screen. Ask that you read along wherever you may be. Leader, in the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. People, rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, and give thanks to God, holy name. I will exalt you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and God's greatness is unsearchable. Amen. Thank you for invoking the Holy Spirit and inviting it into this place. The song selection today comes from the African-American Heritage Hymnal 474. It's Lead Me, Guide Me, and we will do three verses, the three verses there. Would you join us as we sing along? so much for lending your voice. 
now it is time for us to receive our scripture reading today. Our Old Testament will come from Psalm 139, verses 1 through 12, then we'll jump to verses 23 through 24. And our gospel reading, and we ask that you go through the formation uh, at home by standing for the reading of the gospel. It will be read Matthew, the 13th chapter, verses 24 through 30, and verses 36 through 43. Hear the reading of the word. The scripture reading this morning comes from the New Revised Standard Version. Old Testament reading. You know when I sit down and when I rise up, you discern my thoughts from far away. You reach out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all of my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O oh Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is too high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where? Or if I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. And at the forest of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me. And your right hand, if I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, and the light around me because it's not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as, as light to you. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts. See if The gospel reading. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sows good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slave of the householder came and said to him, Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, And has done this. The slave said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather? But he replied, No. For in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be Then he left the crowd and went into the house. And his disciples approached Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field of the kingdom. And the weeds are the children of the evil one. And the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age. Our angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, 
so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom. Thank you so much <clears throat> for our scripture readers. Thank you to our reader, as well as uh, for those who are reading along and, and hearing us. Uh, at this time, we invite you to reaffirm uh, our affirmation of faith as a, a community of believers. This is what we stand on and, and what we trust God have done and, and will do. Let us begin together with our affirmation of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of the heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, life everlasting. Amen. To the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, and the beginning is now. God bless you. Once again, we turn our attention to uh, those who are less fortunate. And by less fortunate, we mean they are in a period of suffering, in a period of grieving or bereavement, or in a period of waiting for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to move or answer prayers in their life. At this time, we turn our attention to the cares and concerns of the community. For those of us that are on our prayer list, those we are emphasizing on today, uh, we do know that this is a time that everybody needs prayer. Uh, we understand that and we are praying for everybody, but for those who are experiencing excruciating pain, experiencing discomfort or transitional periods in their life, uh, in particular, uh, 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 Mr. Jeffrey Fairley, who lost his life, we want to remember uh, that family in our prayers as we continue. Those who have gone in and out of the hospital, as well as we give prayers of thanksgiving for the restoration God has done in our life. At this time, would you pause with me? Let's take a deep breath, listen uh, to the music, and go to God in prayer. Thy kingdom come, that will be done. Father, we thank you for an opportunity to be a part of what you're doing on this earth at this time. Father, we thank you for entrusting us with your word, entrusting us with your spirit, vessels that you created to share the gospel, share the love of Jesus Christ, share the ministry of reconciliation with our fellow man. Father, at this point in our service, there are those who specifically ask for prayers. They said things like, when you pray, remember me, or would you add me to the prayer list 
Father, they may not even ask for prayer, but after the pouring out of their hearts, we know that they need prayer. Whatever it is they're going through, Father, we don't have to say who to touch, when to touch, how to touch them, where to touch them at. Why? Because you're the owner. You have the owner's manual. You made us and you know all about us. So we just ask your kingdom come, your will be done. Father, as we continue to offer you praise and sacrifices on today, we ask that you strengthen our lives, that we may strengthen and be of service to those who are in prayer. Whether it's offering a cold drink of water, bottle of water, or providing them some food, or, or whatever it may be, offering economic relief, whatever it may be, we thank you for entrusting us and giving us the resources to do it, and we ask that you move in our life, that we may move through their lives. Whatever it is, whatever it is, Father, we know you have all power in your hand. Father, we ask you to bless us on this week. Continue to comfort us, hold us in the palm of your hand. Father, sincerely, we ask that you enable us to see that we're better together than we are apart. So allow us to be vessels of healing to one another. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray that everybody please say amen. Amen. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of our hearts. It is that time where we do extend uh, thanks and praise and, and show our gratitude uh, for those who are continuing to support the ministry of Aldersgate uh, United Methodist Church. Uh, there are ways to give. You have been giving that way so far. We ask that you continue, continue to give and may God bless you and restore upon you those blessings from which you are giving. May he give it back to you. Uh, for a hundred times uh, full. And so we are excited about that. And we definitely want to thank you. If you're not giving and you'd like to contribute to this ministry, you can uh, send us a check, money order, uh, 655 Beasley Road here in the city of Jackson, Mississippi 39206. Or you can set it up with your bank, your financial institution, and they will make sure uh, they send it out to us as well. <clears throat> Because what we have received, join me as we return, thanks to God, all things. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own, as we God bless you. This morning, I would like to talk with you briefly about the subject of the subject matter of being a disciple. Being a disciple. What is it like to be a disciple? What does it look like? What does God expect of us? But in talking about that, I would like to parallel it with something that we all are familiar with the weeds in our life, the weeds in our yard. We're very familiar with the weeds in our yard. Now, I stand here before you today believing that everyone deals with weeds. Everybody in the church here, everybody out there in video, internet land, wherever you are, 
you deal with some type of weed in your yard, in your lawn or wherever it is that you're living at. Let me explain. If you're a homeowner, uh, if you do it yourself, like myself, then you've gone out and purchased a weed eater or edge or whatever you want to call it. There are a number of brands and you have to get out there and not only do you have to cut the yard, but you have to edge a driveway and you have to weed eat. That's what it's called, a weed eater that take care of the weed. And when you get through, you have somebody like your wife or your neighbor who said, man, that looks good. Living among the weeds. If you are a renter, what you pay for your rent, the, the home or uh, the resident that you're leasing, part of that go toward maintenance and there's a maintenance crew. You may be a homeowner and you don't do it yourself. You may pay somebody to come and do it. The point I want to make is that regardless who you are, where you are, at some point in your life, wherever you're living at, we either do it ourselves or we consult or contract somebody to do it for us. Now, some people are fancy, and uh, my brother, uh, uh, Mr. Phillips, Ronnie Phillips, told me to stay away from that. There are some of us who turn around and, 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 and spray weed killer, all right? And so if you have a large enough property and you spray weed killer, that's on you. But the point I want to make is that all of us, some point in our life, especially in the summer, we deal with weeds. And that's the question I want to ask you today. How are you dealing with the weeds in your life? From the scripture that was read earlier, Matthew uh, 13, uh, I want to look at verse 27, and this is where the text come from. And the slave said to the house owner, he came and said to him, they came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seeds in the field? He answered, yes, and da-da-da-da. And they go on and say, well, where did these weeds come from? Well, brothers and sisters, weeds are a part of life. They are a part of life. Now, I want to make the transition. I'm not talking about the grass anymore. I want to talk about weeds in our life. First, we have to define weeds. What are weeds? What, what are weeds? Weeds are anything that is competing for time, attention, life, nourishment, light, water. If it grows in the yard, it is competing. It's taking away from the good grass. So it's competing at the same time. It's competing for it. And so the weeds are there. We have to deal with it. And so the best we've come up with and all of our years of living on this earth, we've come up with managing them. And so it is, I feel, that we have to come up with managing weeds in our life. Now, keep in mind, the definition we just used is a weed is anything that competes for your life, anything that competes for attention, anything that competes, anything that pulls you away, if God is the life-giving source, he turns the sun on, he shines the light on it, he sends water through rain, he, and he allows us the education to turn around and deal with nourishment. And so there are weeds in our life that turn around and try to pull us away from God. We call that in the Bible, that sin. Anything that pulls us away from God. Now, weeds are a very big problem. It is a billion dollar business. When you get time, you go and Google Roundup, weed killer. Or you go and Google uh, steel uh, 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 products. Uh, 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 you know what I'm trying to say. Those, the, 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 the different brands that sell weed. Either. It is a billion dollar business in order for us to do that. And so my question is, if we spend so much time and attention and so much money in caring for the weeds in our yard, what are we doing to deal with the weeds around in our life? I believe we have to manage it. And the way we manage it is first of all, through giving our life to Christ and living as a disciple. How do we live as a disciple? How do we live as a disciple? We live and do what Jesus done. We listen and read and, and, and wait to hear his voice and then we proceed in that manner. So once we become a disciple, it doesn't stop there. It is a repetitive event. We have to turn and begin to be an example for those who are not disciples because if we're disciples and this God that we serve is so great, so awesome and he blesses us, we ought to want to share it with somebody else but in sharing that 
We have to deal with the weed. I'm a firm believer we, lead, we lose more disciples of Christ or they are sidelined or pull out the game or voluntarily take themselves out the game because they were sideswiped by the weeds. They were not ready for something to compete with them as they were competing for God's attention. As, as we grow closer to Christ, Satan gets stronger. Watch this. As we go closer, as, as we grow, as, as we grow closer and healthier to Christ. Satan grows stronger because that's one soul that he's lost. He know he doesn't have us. And so what he have to do is unleash all his tactic. He has to send weeds in our life to try to distract us and compete from our attention. Think about the time that we read and study our Bible and think how hard it is. Yeah, we can get up and get into a routine, but do you not believe that Satan will send something to turn around and knock you off that schedule? Why? Because he want to compete for the time and attention that you're giving our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So I believe we have to read the scripture and be prepared for the weeds. One of the ways we can be prepared is look at Isaiah's gospel. Now I know Isaiah is not a gospel, but if he was, he would be considered the fifth gospel. And what Isaiah said in Isaiah 54 and 17, listen at this, and I, I think we have to really take this to heart. He says, no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. Notice what he didn't say. He didn't say because we are disciples, he didn't say the weeds wouldn't come. He didn't say because we are disciples, the weapons would not be formed. Oh, it's going to be formed, but the key word is it will not prosper. Those who are working behind the scenes, those who are trying their best to throw us off our, our joy and off our game, those who are trying to pull our attention away from God, what they're doing, it will form, but it will not prosper. So I believe as disciples, we have to wake up every day knowing that there's stuff that's been in the work that's and it's Satan stuff is trying to take us down. He's trying to knock us off our game. He's trying to get us out of our meditative stage. He's trying to pull us away from, from fasting and praying and forgiving. I want to forgive. And then this little head, this little voice come in and say, if you forgive, they ain't going to do nothing but do the same thing over and over. That's competing to pull us away from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Fear is a weed. Look at all the fear that's going on. Everybody is running and we're fearful and we're afraid. Do you not believe that God that turned the sun on is still in control? So first and foremost, we become disciples. And once we become disciples, we, we begin to live as Jesus lived. As a disciple, we're going to have to weep sometimes. Luke 19, 41, Jesus wept over Jerusalem. He came to the city where well, the word of God said, as he came near and saw the city, he weeped over it. Times in our life, we're going to have to weep as Jesus wept. Not only weeping, but we're going to have to love because Jesus loved. Mark 10, 21, Jesus looking at him, loved him and said, you lack one thing, go sell what it is. Talking to the rich young ruler, you've done all of this, but you lack one thing. Go sell it and turn around and come and follow me. And the Bible tells us he was unable to do that. So we have to lay the foundation. In order to deal with weeds in our life, we have to lay the foundation. God wants our uh, 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 undivided attention. God wants us to follow him. God wants us to serve him and he alone. God wants us to weep from time to time. And God wants us to love those that around us. In doing this, we begin to train disciples. Now, in training disciples, one of the best way we train is just by other people watching us. They watch us, and so some people we don't even know that they're watching, we don't even know that they're, we're training them, but we're passing it on and on. I was particularly interested at this 27 verse and reading this passage, I was interested because I was under the impression that the landowner would have wanted the slaves to go out and pull up the weeds. Yeah. I just knew he was give them to the go ahead. Yeah, you go. I, I went out and sold. I've done my job. You go out there and you pull them up. So they ask him, where did they come from? And he goes into this litany and tells them where they come from. It's Satan. It's the enemy. And I think we have to identify that. 
I've said over and over again, when we're interacting with one another, when we're engaging with one another and, and the conversation goes sideways, Satan has gotten on one of us. Now, and I've said before, it, it is not that I've become Satan or, or you've become Satan or that other person in the conversation has become Satan or that other person who opposes us have become Satan. No, but they are act, they're acting Satan-ish. They are allow Satan to lead and drive. They're disobeying the gospel of God because the gospel said, if somebody, if your brother commit a sin against you, you have an alt against them, uh, even if you're at the altar, leave your offering at the altar and go to them and ask for forgiveness. Oh, what a wonderful world it'll be if just if just we forgive those and, and we forgive those who have sinned against us and against God. So how do we live among the weeds? Why do we have to live among the weeds? They, you know, they ask him, so what you want us to do? Go and pull them up. All of your hard work all the tilling of the ground, all of the preparation, and, and you plant it. And see, we, we didn't even know this happened uh, uh, until it started to come up. Now that it's coming up, we see that there's some weeds along with the wheat. What do you want us to do? He answered, yes, the evil, the enemy came. But I don't want you to do anything yet. What i like for you to do is engage, engage them equip them, encourage them, and edify them. What do you mean? I want you to let them grow because if you go out there now and try to pull them up, you may pull up the wrong thing. But if you wait, although it's competing, although it's competing for my time and my attention and my blessing, if you allow it to grow, it's just possible. It's just possible that those, and my mind often goes back to the Pharisees. Why, why did Jesus put up with the questioning, the Pharisees and the Pharisees? Why did he put up? Could it just be he allowed them enough grace to witness the miracle of his father that somebody's soul might be saved? No, you let it alone. You let it grow. You let it grow. If you pull it up now, you can jeopardize the crop. But if you wait to harvest time, matter of fact, you don't even have to pull it up. I'm going to send my angels. I got some special pickers. If, if, if you wait, they're going to pull the weeds out first. If you wait until you have to pull it, if you wait until the time is right to pull it, then you, yeah, I'm going to send them to go and, and pull out all the weeds, and then we're going to burn them. And if you just happen to pull up the wrong thing, it's all right because we was going to pull it anyway. But brothers and sisters, we're here on this earth not to decide who's right or who's wrong, who gets in the church, who's not allowed in, who gets put out. We're here to live among the weeds, those who are competing, those who are in competition and going the wrong way. They are living with us and we are living among them to try to flag them down and wave them in and let them know they're going the wrong way. All we do is offer an invitation to meet Christ. And the way we do that is through living our lives in front of them. By them seeing us forgive and interact. By see them seeing us bless other individuals. We become disciples, but we also make disciples. He said, until the Son of Man sends his angels, you keep living as you are. You keep striving to get into heaven. This is the word of God for the people of God on this day. And we all said, thanks be to God. Amen. At this time, we always extend an opportunity for you to give your life to Christ. Wherever you are, if you are interested in a relationship with Christ, if you're interested in, in, in a better way to live among the weeds, if you're interested in to becoming a better disciple of Jesus Christ, we ask that you send us an email, even give us a call. And we will speak with you and spend time with you leading you to Christ. It begins today with you making a conscious effort to accept him as your personal savior. As we sing this song, we ask that you contemplate giving your life to Christ. God will make a way. Thank you. 
God bless you. Thank you for taking time out of your schedule this morning and tuning in wherever you are across this world. We bless you. We hope that you are a blessing to others. We hope you receive something on today that will help you and encourage you throughout this week. Would you receive the benediction at this time? Now may the grace of God rest, rule, and abide, henceforth, now, and forever. Let us all sing amen. God bless you. Have a good day, Aldersgate. We love you. We miss you. God bless you once again. Goodbye.